Well, this item here will right, pretty open look. That wasn't me. Just like it's lucky it had tape stuck to the inside. All right. Looks like it doesn't fall out. So we now have a mixed assortment of nuts. <laughs> the divider's fallen out. And this is a rivet though, for doing rivet nuts. Now I showed some rivet nuts in the last no bag or another segment, or oh, I don't bloody know where it is. I actually just got some nuts, so I can actually have a rivet gun, which is what this is. And the idea is you get a nut like this, and you get the appropriate size adapter for it. Okay, so I found a white run. So this is just the end piece that goes on here. Now in this case, this particular one which I want to demonstrate will actually pass right through. These other ones are stepped down, they're a slightly different setup on them. Alright, so so in this case what I can actually do is put this on. This is actually a left hand thread. So in order to screw it on it goes the other way around. There's a reason for that. So once you've actually got the thing in there, you can unscrew it again. This is what this is for, you unscrew the piece from the nut. So let's put this end piece on. Which is also a left hand thread apparently. And there's a nut. So what you actually want to do is screw this in with that onto the rivet nut. Alright, so it would be screwed in. And then you would basically pull the nut in with a riveter. And right now it is pulled in because I've released the clamp, so let's do this. That allowed it to come forward more. So now you can screw it on. Okay. Now all you've got to do is basically have a piece of sheet metal with a hole in it. And see the studs right to the end there. And just put this through the hole. And you just rivet it. Literally just crimp it with this. And, uh, and that will collapse the nut part and pinch the plate still. Should have got one of these things years ago. So let's actually try and demonstrate one. So I've got one which is about the size I actually want to use. I've got a particular job I want to do with this right now, which is why I'm recording this bit of video. So I put one on there, it's this size. I think it's about five mil or something like that. So that's all fitted up, just the same as I did on the other one. This is like a limit to find out how much you actually squash it by. So I actually don't know how far this should be set to minimize how much I try and compress by. Because if you try and overdo it, you end up stripping the thread out or something. So I'm just gonna try it like this right now and see how much it crushes and adjust this to suit. You ready? So it started going there. See that? So that appears to be about it. So to adjust this, it's basically going to touch at that point like that, so I don't overdo it. Okay. And there you go, that's the rivet done. Also, you do some plate still normally. And that sandwiches it. Yep, that's fully compressed, so happy with that. So I need to go and do this and see if it works. Well, I used the rivet nut tool, worked absolutely fine. Leave a link for that down below. Right. So these are filters. As you may have seen some of my videos when using my oscilloscope, I get a lot of electrical noise here, lots of EMI noise, stuff like that. Radiated it, radiated it from various cables, and I spent some time the other day doing some tracking down, trying to figure out what things are generating all this noise. And a lot of it is these power supplies, things like my camera and my lights. Those are generating most of the noise. I've already got lots of ferrites on these things to try and help them. Well, there must be some pre-made filters you can buy, I and mean, someone must make them. And there's lots of different ones out there to select from, actually. So I've actually purchased a few big filters, so I've got these two here which are quite large. I've also got some more which are coming. I think these ones were 20 amps or something, these particular ones. Doesn't say what these ones are rated to. But I've got a few different ones, these ones are quite high current ones. I've got some smaller ones as well coming, which would be a bit better for inline stuff. I was thinking I could put these on my, some of my main power supplies here, and filter the main supply from the power supply itself, so that at least the wires aren't radiating noise as well. That's the plan anyway.
Ooh, little bags they go down into too. So it's basically a little cable holder. So oh, it's upside down. On oh, no, a branding not wrap, don't you? Bloody branding on it. Covered it up. It's actually rubber. And you can put in like cables and hang them off the wall or whatever off a shelf or something. Now I've got a bunch of cables here which are kind of in the way and dangling. Here's one of them. And the idea is I think is I should be able to do that with it and just have a nice little holder which I put somewhere which keeps these all nicely organised. And I could have done a 3D printed one, I could have made my own. Um but I saw these there, these are pretty cheap, so I thought oh, they look quite nice, so I might get a couple of them. We'll see how they go. Alright, got some more packages turned up, so I've added them onto this mailbag. Lucky you. Maybe. <laughs> What's this? Oh. Two boxes. Okay. Oh, it's um, enclosures. Kind of. Um, Right, well that's the top and bottom, where's the front and back? I think I bought these a couple of weeks ago. Okay, there's feet and stuff here. Maybe this is the front panels and stuff here. Hold on, maybe I was too quick to judge. Ah, oh, here we go, here's the front panels. Right, they're all good. There's panels, excellent. So that's all right then. So the panel's there with them as well. I'm going to have to organise this better, but yeah. Okay, so two of these boxes. Quite nice metal boxes. I wanted metal boxes because the project I want to use these on has to be shielded, has to be a shielded box. Although these front and rear panels are plastic. It would seem, not metal. People just want them in there. But at least the sides are metal, I suppose. It would give some kind of shielding. Yeah. Maybe I can put some copper tape inside or something. No, I don't know. This is a clue on the outside here. It's from Jewel Scope. Excellent. I know what this is. This is a review item. So I'll be doing a video on this. This knife's not going to cut it. I need an actual knife. This is from, was it Matt, was it? I believe it was. Yeah, got a little note from from him. I think it was Matt. Yes, Matt Liberty. Here we go. There's a software download I need to do. It apparently works on Mac and Windows. I think there's supposed to be a Linux version coming out soon as well. And I have to read this properly. But yeah, this is um, got some information. It's got um, JS220 and the evaluation kit as well. So apparently it's retail price of thousand dollars US, same as the JS110. So the current version is the same price. So they upgraded it a lot, it's got some extra features and stuff like that and then better accuracy and high resolution. I think it's like 14 bit versus 16 bit or something like that. Neither one's 16 bit, I think. I've got that right. Launch date is Thursday the 3rd of November. So when I publish this video, this would have just launched or it's just about to launch. I usually publish my review videos on a um, Wednesday. New Zealand times is usually like Tuesday worldwide. So you'll see the mailbag video on a Monday or Sunday worldwide so you'll see this one then but the actual review I'll probably do in a couple of days time hopefully it's enough time to actually play around with this and actually make a review video for it I want to do it in time for this launch date yeah it needs a new software version um, 0.10.5 I've already downloaded 0.9 for the previous version dual scope so I need the newer version which is a beta currently whilst it's in testing that's okay cool thanks a lot Matt so let's have a quick look at what we're actually dealing with here So look at the white box first. What's in here? This is the evaluation kit. So I believe this is like a hundred dollars by itself, but you can use it for doing testing and things like that. It's got a Raspberry Pi Pico on it as the actual controller. Then we can generate test signals and you can actually use it in some way. I'm not too familiar with this yet, I haven't actually looked into that. I'll probably have to find out more information. Oh look, you know, we need to have this on the desk, don't we? So here we've got a USB 3, the USB A cable. We've got the actual evaluation board in there. Let's see little brochure thing about that. So apparently the evaluation kit it's open source as well and it's coded using MicroPython. 
and you can download it from Dualscope as well. And you can use this to basically do testing of your Dualscope and checking simulations and stuff like that. From what I can tell. Let's get this. So this is a pre-release version. So there may be some differences in this between this one I'll get and the final release that gets out there. I don't know if there's any plans to make revisions. I expect there will be updates over time, but I expect the hardware is going to be exactly the same, but you never quite know, dear. Things could change. So here we go. What we got here? So we've got a GPIO input here. We've got a status LED, I'm guessing just there. USB C port trigger in and out port. And on this side, you've got binding posts. Nice little catty binding posts there, which have got holes through them to put wires through if you want to. So you've got voltage and current sensing. So this can do a plus or minus 15 volts, plus or minus. I think it's 3.3 amps continuous. I think it's a 10 amp surge or pulse it can handle as well. So it can actually handle a bit more. It's got a very high dynamic range apparently. Um, 16 bit I think it was. And this is web address there. And these um, end panels, these are replaceable. So you can actually take this end panel off. And there's open source versions. You can actually put different ones on it. Like if you do USB testing for example, you can swap this out for a USB system. So you put USB in and out ports on it instead. Or things like that. So you actually customize this to whatever you need. You can get the template off the uh, GitHub, I think it is, and you can then just make whatever front panel you want to do your purpose. Very really customizable in that way as well. So a nice case here. Let's see what's in this card here. A little thank you thing. A little bit of a few tips here. How to use it. Get where you get the software from. That sort of stuff just to get you started. A quick start guide. Got another sticker or something just there. I've got some more stuff here too. What's this? We've got another USB C to USB A cable and a GPIO to DuPont style connector system. So you can plug that into the end of the dual scope and you've got these pin headers which you can then plug into things and tap out. Cool. So I'll be doing a full review on this. Obviously, this is just a quick look at it, see what I've got. So watch out for the review video, it'll be very, very soon. I intend to get this out as quickly as I can. Yes, thank you very much, Matt, for sending that to me. I, so I don't have one. This is the first one I've got. Is that they can measure quite large dynamic ranges on voltage and current, mainly for current, obviously doing testing of electronic devices, you know, IoT and what have you. We've got low-power devices which may draw a high current at certain points, so like turning on Wi-Fi or using some other kind of interfacing or something like that. You know, it might be idling at a few microamps or whatever, or milliamps, be running at a few milliamps maybe, and then you'll have an activation and it'll turn on and might be draw an amp or two. And so you need to better measure the whole range. Now I've actually done a video previously using my oscilloscope here to monitor the inrush current of a device which I designed and built, which is a LoRa to Wi-Fi gateway. It also had Ethernet on it as well. And it was actually a bit hard to measure enough detail now because I was looking at the higher current spikes in that case as the right, but I couldn't really see any idling current stuff like that. It wasn't really enough precision there to see what I wanted to see. And my scope's pretty good. We've got a nice scope. I've got quite a good one. But it didn't have the necessary resolution. Whereas this, I believe this would have sufficient resolution to do that job. So make sure you check out the links down below for this thing. Go and take a look and tell them that I sent you. Death Pom sent you. Got it? Got it? Okay, cool. Right, just say hi. Something. I don't know.